just there. I know. That was his fault. There was no one. <laughs> All right, we're now in session. Our Honorable Judge Stephen Ayers, good night. Good morning, everyone. Can you see going to turn on the Zoom, and once I'm logged in, at that point, we will move forward. As with all things computers, it needs an update. Let's go ahead and make the appearances while the computer is performing its function. George We're... Kappelman and Sarah Dugan for the state, Your Honor. Good morning, Your Honor. Dan Rashbaum on behalf of Mr. Adelson, who is present. And we're here this morning for final disposition after jury trial in Mr. Adelson's case. Did either the state or the defense have anything they needed to raise concerning the pre-sentence investigation report? Nothing from the state, Your Honor. No, Your Honor. 
Very well. The pre-sentence investigation report will be filed as a part of the court record. Once the Zoom has finished updating from there, I will open up the Zoom room, and I believe the victim's families were intending to either be present or make additional victim impact statements. Mr. Yes, Kappelman. sir. We have several members of the family that will be present, and one that will be speaking on behalf of the family. Very well. Mr. Rothbaum, does your client wish to make a statement, or will you be making any argument on behalf of counts two and three? Both, both of us will be making a very uh, quick quick statement. Uh, I'll make a quick argument, and uh, Mr. Adelson would like to make a very quick statement. He'll be given the opportunity to do so. First, we will take the victim impact statements. If the parties are intending to sign into the Zoom, you may do so. Just make sure your devices are on mute so it does not create any feedback or problems. Good morning, Mr. Markell. Good morning, sir. I believe Mr. Markell and Shelley Markell have now joined. Ms. Kappelman, how many additional members of the family were you expecting? Well, let me check on that. Uh, one more. I have my mother with me, with Ruth Markell with me. I was about to ask that question. I think we're ready. All right. Good morning. At this time, we are going to start with the victim impact statements. Mr. Markell, I understand you are going to provide it today on behalf of the family. Yes, thank you. You may speak when you're ready. Take all the time you need. Good morning, Your Honor. My name is Phil Markell. I am Dan Markell's father. Dan, my only son, was born October 9th. 1972 in Montreal, Quebec. <clears throat> During that time in Quebec, husbands were not allowed to actually be in the delivery room during a child's birth. However, since the obstetrician was a very close friend of ours, I was allowed to experience the most amazing of moments, the birth of my son. I will never forget the emergence of his head and then those shoulders of an NFL football fullback a boy of 10 pounds. There I was holding in my arms this gift of life, my bundle of absolute sheer joy. From the time he was a child, my son had tremendous energy, intelligence, and great warmth. Dan had a vibrant, fun-loving personality and lived life to its fullest. Danny loved to socialize, dance, cook, entertain, and play sports and dedicated himself wholeheartedly to everything that he did. He always looked to do his utmost to improve and achieve better results in every activity that he did. This desire of improvement and commitment to excellence was a defining characteristic of his short life. 
I fondly remember taking Danny and skiing up the hills in the Laurentian Mountains in Quebec when he was just two years old. He rode up the mountain between my legs, holding on to the T-bar, T-bar and then coming down the ski hill, yelling with great joy, Faster, Dad, faster! Then, as he grew a little older, he played hockey at the local park. To prove his skating skills, he requested to take a speed skating lesson with a local coach who was from Russia, and he had a very uh, a reputation of being a very tough coach. Dan persevered, and after every hockey lesson, he came off the ice with a red face, totally out of breath, because he always gave it his all. At about the age of 13, <clears throat> Danny developed the idea that he was going to Harvard University for his college education. He discovered that the acceptance requirements for Harvard were not only good grades, but also work for the community and charitable work. To achieve these goals, he revived his high school newspaper. He became the newspaper's editor, the business manager, and performed charitable deeds and volunteered in the community. After years of hard work and determination, Dan was accepted to Harvard. He graduated from Harvard Magna Cum Laude, went on to study at the Hebrew University of Jerusalem for one year, and then earned a Master in the Philosophy and Political Theory from Emmanuel College at the University of Cambridge in England. He returned thereafter to Harvard Law School to earn his law degree, and went on to become an extremely successful lawyer, influential legal scholar. Dan served as a law clerk for a federal judge worked as an associate of the prestigious law firm in Washington, D.C., and then secured a prestigious teaching position at FSU College of Law. In a few short years, Dan became a full-tenured law professor before the tender age of 41. Quite unusual. Dan co-authored a book and published many articles in highly regarded law journals, and newspapers like the New York Times. Dan's work was influential, and he gave lectures and presented at universities around the world. Although Dan was fond of his Canadian roots, he was very dedicated to the FSU Law School and the Tallahassee community. He was recognized as a scholar who contributed and made a difference in the world. While Dan's career was important to him, Family meant everything to Dan. <clears throat> Danny's marriage produced two boys, Benjamin and Lincoln, who were his absolute world and the love thing to him. Dan made sure that he and the boys came to Montreal to him. Dan made sure that he and the boys came to Montreal and Toronto to attend every family affair and visit with all the extended Markel family, including grandparents, uncles, aunts, and many numerous cousins. Despite the distance, <clears throat> Dan felt that the boys had to know and be a part of family. Dan also made sure that he and the boys participated in the Tallahassee community. They were involved in the local synagogue Dan left home at the young age of 17 to go to Harvard, <clears throat> but he always came home for summer vacation, holidays, and all family functions. Danny and I, despite the fact that we lived quite far apart, regularly communicated by text, email, and phone calls. <clears throat> despite the physical distance, as time moved on, we grew ever so much closer. At Dan's suggestion, we would plan to talk and have a meal together. At the appointed day and time, we each would prepare our meals, set our tables with a tablet in the middle, and over Skype, Skype <clears throat> we would sit together and enjoy each other's company for a couple of hours despite the actual distance. Dan's life Dan's life was abruptly cut short, and he was forever taken from me, his boys, and the rest of our family, and all his many friends and colleagues. 
My life has been a total disarray since Dan's murder. <clears throat> Many nights I wake up in the middle of the night in a terrible sweat. The thought of Dan's murder and all that have happened. There is not a single day in my life since Danny's death that in one way or another he does not enter into my thoughts. And I miss him with all my heart. I am constantly reminded of Dan's murder and his absence. When I meet new people, the topic of discussion always comes up when they ask whether I have children. How do I respond? It is difficult to put into words the heinous acts that took Danny away from us. The unthinkable pain that I must live with every single day. Losing a son or a daughter is something I wish nobody, nobody should have to experience. It's not in the order of nature. <clears throat> Danny is never coming back. We continue to hope and pray for justice and the return to normality of seeing and playing a vital role in the lives of our two grandsons, Ben and Lincoln. It has been a number of years since that last roll of the impact statement, sharing how Danny's death has affected me. <clears throat> Despite our persistent efforts, we still do not have a real relationship with Danny's son, Ben and Lincoln. Visits are limited and very controlled. For six years, we were denied any and all visits with the boys. In the last two years, I've been permitted two 60 to 90 minute visits, supervised visits. This limited contact is incredibly painful. And I feel like we have cut out of our lives. Not only have I lost my son, <clears throat> but I have effectively lost two of my grandkids as well. Even their family names have been changed from Markel to Abelson. While we work hard to help introduce a new bill in the state of Florida known as the Markel Act, which gives grandparents important rights, unfortunately, our relationship with Ben and Lincoln has, been, has not been materially true. As this bill was coming to fruition, there was a lot of negative publicity in the press and media about Danny's ex-wife, Wendy. <clears throat> in my opinion, Wendy was focused on improving her public image, and as a result, extended an invitation to us to Ben's bar mitzvah. Ruth and I were invited to attend only the ceremonial part of this important stage in the Jewish boy's life and we were not invited to participate in any reception typical of this celebration. <clears throat> but this invitation opened the door to one of the limited visits described above. In order not to not overwhelm Ben and Lincoln on this important day, we asked, <clears throat> We asked to arrange a meeting before the markets in order to make things easier on the boys, who we hadn't been allowed to visit in years. We were able to arrange a brief 90 minute supervised visit to Santa Monica and a few weeks before, this would be a few weeks before the markets. However, <clears throat> immediately after our brief visit, Charlie was arrested. And Wendy rescinded our invitation to the bar mitzvah. At the time, she said that they were going to either postpone or completely cancel this bar mitzvah ceremony. Neither of those happened. Excuse <clears throat> me. Take your time, sir. <clears throat> Instead, my understanding is that the Aylsons went on to have the bar mitzvah ceremony and party, all without the Markel family's presence or participation. Missing out on this important moment in Ben's life was incredibly painful. After so many years without Ben, we had hoped to make progress in forging a consistent relationship with his son to this important life cycle of death. 
Dan's murder brought his life abruptly to an end for no sensible reason and has affected a countless number of people. The legal community is deprived of Dan's wisdom and ideas, <clears throat> which made the world a better place. Dan's students are deprived of the experience of having Dan as a brilliant professor and caring mentor, showing them a path. Dan's colleagues can no longer benefit from Dan's friendship, insects, and scholarly, scholarly discussions and debates. <clears throat> Ruth and I have been deprived of our son, who has been taken away from us so suddenly and totally against life's schedule. Ben and Lincoln must go through life without their father, who loved them with all his being. The boys have been deprived of their father's entire family after Dan's murder. We have, <clears throat> we have no idea of what these two boys know or have been told about Danny's death. They truly believe, I truly believe that they have been brainwashed in all these years from the ages of three and four years of age to the present day. I also have no idea what the boys know of us, the entire Martell family, our history, etc., and especially <clears throat> how much we all love them, and how we wish they were active part of our family. Both Ruth, <coughs> sorry. Both Ruth and I are approaching 80 years of age. At this moment we are healthy, but one does not know what tomorrow brings. The wheels of justice turn very, very slowly. But so far, we're very grateful that they're still dirty. We're very grateful to Tallahassee Law Enforcement, to the state attorney, and all their staff, to all our relatives and friends, including the hundreds of Danny's friends and colleagues around the world, for their constant support over these long 10 years, to all the podcasters who work hard to keep alive this unbelievable story. We are still waiting for Benjamin and Lincoln to have a more normal relationship with the Martell family as we wait in pain and anguish. The Adelson family, in particular Charlie Adelson, has been a major cause of our heartbreak and the murder of our son Danny and the loss of our two grandsons. <clears throat> I have suffered tremendously and we as a family continue to suffer. It is satisfying to see justice being done, and it would be appropriate to ask for the maximum sentence for the perpetrators of Danny's murder. Thank you. Today is a good day. Thank you, Mr. Markell. Was there anything else that you wish to say as a part of your victim impact? No, sir. Ms. Kappelman. Um, we do have some letters which we submitted to the court as your honor received those and had an opportunity to review them. I did. I was able to review the letters. They were also a part of the pre-sentence investigation packet which will be filed in the court file as well. Yes, sir. Nothing further regarding victim impact. What is the state's argument with regard to sentence, at least as it concerns counts two and three? In regards to counts two and three, Your Honor, we are seeking the maximum sentence. We're asking for consecutive 30-year sentences on both of those. I have prepared a score sheet in reference to those. May I approach? You may. Have you already showed the score sheet to Mr. Rushbaugh? I think so, but I'll... Yes. Thank you. Does the state have any further presentation to make? The only other you know, matter. Or are going to give a brief statement that is interesting? Go ahead. The only other matter, Your Honor, is that in reference to costs of prosecution, we've been attempting to gather up some of the necessary financial paperwork from the FBI and TPD and my office as well to see if we can come to an agreement with the defense on what costs of prosecution should be ordered in this case. 
we have not been able to do that yet, um, so I would ask for your honor to reserve that issue for 90 days. Um, it's possible, as I said, we can reach an agreement on it, but if not, I would ask for a hearing sometime around 90 days to make a determination about costs of prosecution. Mr. Rauschbaum, do you have any argument to make on behalf of your client as to counts two or three? Judge, uh, we understand the situation. We just ask that those counts be run concurrently. Very well. Mr. Adelson, I'm going to give you the opportunity to make a statement if you wish. You do not have to speak. However, this is your opportunity if you choose to do so. I do. You may stand. Sam. I would just like to say that I maintain my innocence. Well, please rise. I'm now going to pronounce the sentence. With the jury having found you guilty of all three counts that you were charged with in your indictment of first degree murder, conspiracy to commit first degree murder, and solicitation to commit first degree murder, I am going to adjudicate you guilty of all three at this time, and you are going to be sentenced as follows. As to count one, the first degree murder count pursuant to section 782.04 and 775.082 for the statutes, you are sentenced to life imprisonment without the possibility of release or parole. As to count two, you are going to be sentenced consecutively to 30 years in the Department of Corrections for a conspiracy to commit first degree murder. As to count three, you are going to be sentenced to 30 years in the Department of Corrections consecutively for solicitation to commit first degree murder. The credit for time served that applies in this matter is how much? 597. 597 days will be applied as credit for time served in this case. If the clerk could please read all fees and costs, that would apply as well. Uh, $2,100 of the fine pursuant to Florida Statute 775.083, $105 of the fine pursuant to Florida Statute 775.083, and the fine stopper trust fund. $3 of the court cost pursuant to Florida Statute 938.01, subsection 1, Criminal Justice Trust Fund, $50 pursuant to Florida Statute 938.03, Crimes Compensation Trust Fund, $225 pursuant to Florida Statute 938.05, Local Government Criminal Justice Trust Fund, $2 of the court cost pursuant to Florida Statute 938.15, County Criminal Justice Education, County Code, 7-26, $50 of the court cost pursuant to Florida Statute 775.083, subsection 2, County Crime Prevention, $3 of the court cost pursuant to Florida Statute 938.19, Team Court Assessment, New York County Florida Code 7-28, $65 of the court cost pursuant to Florida Statute 939.185, County Additional Court Cost, County Code 7-24, with a total of 2,600. Mr. Rashbaum, is there any lawful objection for you to raise to the assessment as announced by the clerk? No, Your Honor. Those amounts will be assessed at this time. Ms. Kappelman, I will reserve 90 days of jurisdiction to address the cost of prosecution in this case. By statute, the state is entitled to the 100, but this is in excess of the 100 is what you're referring to. Yes, Your Honor. Very well. 30 days to appeal both your conviction and now your sentence, Mr. Adelson. You are going to be fingerprinted today. And from here, you are going to be sent to the Department of Corrections to begin serving your sentence. Mr. Rauschbaum, if you please can timely file the notice of appeal so that way there is no issues regarding any review of the conviction itself. Does either party have anything further to raise to the court before we finish for today? Nothing from the state. No, Your Honor. 
we are in recess. Mr. and Mrs. Markell, have a good day. Thank you for being available so you can provide your victim impact statements. Have a good day. Thank you, Your Honor. Thank you. Cheyenne, you can take this. This is the precepts investigation information.